We're finally moving forward a little bit in time to the 12th century to Aelred of Riveau, he lived from about 1110 to 1167. Like many of the folks on our pilgrimage, Aelred was also a monk. He was the abbot of Rivo Abbey in Yorkshire, Cistercian Abbey. He came from a, a, a clergy family. His father and some of his other relatives were clergy. And in the 12th century, there was kind of a crackdown and there were rules that if the children of clergy wanted to become clergy, they had to become monks to avoid inheriting property. Now, part of this was, of course, economic, but part of it was the fact that the spiritually and pastorally it would be a disaster to be kind of inheriting um, those responsibilities. Aylred is educated at the Cathedral School of Durham and then sent up to the court of King David of Scotland. Um, David was building a kind of modern Norman court modeled after the English courts into the south. Aylred rose to the level of steward, which is kind of chief of staff, um, so a very high level indeed. Um, while he was there, he met some Cistercian monks and was impressed with their life and their holiness, and so he left his post and went down to Rivo. Now the Cistercians, we should talk about them for a second, they were a reforming movement that began in France. Um, they, uh, the key figure is Bernard of Clairvaux. They wanted to have a more strict observance of the Benedictine rule. Their buildings are typically a little more austere and plain. Their liturgy is a little bit cleaner and more austere, at least by their standards. I think we would still find it pretty rich. So back to Aylred. He was appointed novice master, which is a really critical role in these monasteries. Monastic relationships are, are profoundly intimate and deep. And it's a lot like marriage. And so kind of onboarding is a really critical process. People really need to know how this whole kind of thing works. After that, he was appointed abbot of a smaller abbey and then uh, went back to Rivo as the abbot. Now, the 12th century itself saw this explosion of academic and literary work, and there was a huge economic expansion. So populations began to spike as well, and monasteries were growing very quickly. Aylred came into that environment and kind of described in a new way what it was to be in these relationships, to be in a monastery. Now he's known primarily for two works. The first, The Mirror of Charity, he wrote um, at the invitation of Bernard. He asked him to do it. Um, and that he wrote when he was novice master at Rivo. And that really describes what it is to engage deeply in, in a sense of love. The second is called On Spiritual Friendship. Now, On Spiritual Friendship is based on Cicero's On Friendship. And it talks in really gentle terms about what it is for friendship to be a spiritual discipline, to have intimate and powerful friendships within uh, the Christian life. Here's two quotes. No medicine is more valuable, none more efficacious, none better suited to the cure of all our temporal ills than a friend to whom we may turn for consolation in time of trouble and with whom we may share our happiness in time of joy. And here's the second. Here we are, you and I, and I hope that Christ makes a third in us. No one can interrupt us now. So come now, dearest friend, reveal your heart and speak your mind. Two just beautiful passages talking about this, the idea of spiritual, uh, spiritual friendship, uh, friendship as a spiritual exercise. Now for Aylred, equality is required for true friendship. Uh, and here's a quote, among human beings, and this is a property of friendship, there exists neither superior nor inferior. So friendship in this world among people gives us a glimpse of the kinds of relationships that God wants to have with us. Um, the free exchange of love. And this really comes back to Aylward's gift to the church today. He really worked to, um, to understand how our relationships here in this world can be mirrors of the way that God wants to interact with us, to, to love us. And so uh, for that and for all of the other things that Aylward has given us, uh, we, we give thanks to God. Earlier this morning, I was at Rivo Abbey, um, another sort of site, uh, Cistercian Abbey, uh, the site of the Shrine of St. Aylred before it was um, dismantled during the suppression of the monasteries. Um, coming over the kind of the hills, there's actually one road that's a 25% that's a grade, um, and uh, coming over the hills into the valley and seeing this, this beautiful, stunning ruin um, was really quite powerful. I was struck with how enormous it was. Um, just a huge, huge building, um, really in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that's only just one piece of it. Um, I found myself reflecting on how 
Christianity must have felt really different in Aylward's time, in some respects kind of comfortable, everyone was a Christian. Um, and so he needed to find a way to, to help people continue to grow in the faith, um, to, to grow into the challenge that the gospel has for everyone. And for Aylward, I found my, my thoughts and reflections turning back to this idea that friendship that we have here in this world with, with people who are our friends um, is a, a, a mirror, a glimpse of how God wants to be, be friendly with us, to be friends with us with that same kind of, of intimacy and equality. Um, I found that to be a, a very powerful thing I kept coming back to in my, in my thoughts and prayers.